If there was one mainline brand I knew the least about, it would probably be Kyosho. In the modern RC era, Kyosho is more or less an oddball in the RC world. We're in a different era! Get over it! Woo! Always there, but never at the forefront of the scene as a whole. And these days, at least when it comes to the 10th scale, Kyosho is nearly non-existent. Looking back at Kyosho though, it turns out they used to be one of, if not the most prolific manufacturer during the early days of RC racing as a whole. Before we dive in, however, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you to subscribe to the channel and be sure to hit the like button and comment what you think of the video. With that out of the way, this is the history of Kyosho. Yeah. Kyosho was founded in Japan in 1963 by a man named Hisashi Suzuki in the at the time growing city of Tokyo. The idea at the time was to make electronic toys for both Japan and abroad with an emphasis on making sure they were as fun as possible. They made some toys like die-cast models for a little while, until about 1970 when they decided to do something no other company in Japan had done at the time, and that would be to create Japan's first truly remote control car. Up until the 1970s, RC cars were still considered sort of a novelty, and not really practical as RC aircraft were all the rage, along with the growing popularity of RC slot cars. However, Mr. Suzuki decided to change that, and started the trend and meme I'd like to call Kyosho did it first. Mr. Suzuki got to work in his workshop, and thanks to his job at the US Army base he was close to, he was able to get his hands on a few model RC car engines. For a time, he worked on this project, and in October of 1970, he unveiled this project, the Dash 1, in front of a crowd of industry members in a parking lot in Tokyo, in the rain. A crowd of about 20 to 30 people were amazed by the three prototypes, and just like that, RC in Japan had taken off. Now on its own, the Dash 1 would have been great, but thanks to the rising boom of motorsports in Japan at the time, everyone was looking to get some kind of internal combustion fix, and the Dash 1 provided that in spades. The Dash 1 went into production and sale about a month after the presentation and cost about 23,000 yen without an engine, of which you usually had to import from Germany or America. Now, there's another thing that to note when it came to the Dash 1 that made it even more popular, and that was oddly the controller enough that came with it. If you're watching this video and have run an RC car before, chances are you used one of these style transmitter, the pistol trip controller. Yeah, Kyosha did that first in the form of the Bell Star 220. Combine these two, and you have the makings of a very important car in the Dash 1. Later on in 1971, a Dash 2 was made, a sort of a budget version of Dash 1 with a one-piece chassis. During this time, the main type of RC racing was on-road 8th scale racing in the 70s. However, another type of racing was starting to gain traction around the world, and that was 8th scale off-road racing. At the time, it was becoming more popular in Italy, but to the Japanese, the Italian designs seemed, and I quote, not well constructed, so they made their own designs. The Dash 3 Dune buggy was Kyosho's first 8th scale buggy, and while it wasn't exactly fantastic performance-wise, it was basically a pan car with buggy wheels, and from that design alone, you can probably assume the result. Still, along its main rival, the Ishimi Ishimasa Rat Buggy, it created that itch for off-road racing that never really went away. The first time they met on the track was in 1972 in the Tamagawa ground in Kawasaki. Surprisingly, even though the rat was much more sophisticated, the dune was able to last longer due to its superior durability, and as a result, took home the win. We'll come back to 8th scale in a moment. For now, let's talk about 10th scale. It's really impossible to talk about this general era of RC without mentioning the rise of 10th scale off-road racing. Thanks to Tamiya, one of Kyosho's rivals in the RC world, and their successful line of buggies in the late 70s and early 80s, Kyosho decided to throw their hat into the ring with the Elec Peanuts model dune buggy. It very much was not a racer, but more of a moving model, like most things at the time. However, when people began racing their models, Kyosho wanted to give their customers something that would be built pretty much from the ground up to be a racer. What they came up with was the Scorpion. 
The Scorpion was basically a scaled down version of their 8th scale engine buggy at the time called the Circuit 20. We'll get back to that in a minute. And as a result, it was very much a racing buggy at heart. As a result of the fact that it was generally a good design, and its competition were more or less moving models and less racing buggies, the Scorpion dominated for a little while, until you guessed it, in 1984, the RC-10 Team Associated was released. The Scorpion, and by extension the Tomahawk of which it was based, was a very good contender against the RC-10, even making it to the A-Main of the first IFMAR 10th scale worlds in 1985, if only one of them. However, the RC-10 was a newer design, and Kyosho needed to rethink their idea of just downsizing an A-scale buggy, and that's when we got the Kyosho Ultima. The Ultima debuted in 1987, and was a very solid buggy for its time, and to be honest, after driving one myself, still is to this day. It had a lightweight monocoque aluminum chassis and double wishbone suspension. As a result of the new design, the buggy would go on to win not just the podium, but the entire podium in the 1987 IFMAR Worlds. What car were you using to win the final here today? Uh, the Kyosho Ultima. This sweep really propelled Kyosho even further into the public eye outside of both 8th scale and Japan as a whole. The Ultima name itself has been carried on to this day with their two-wheel drive buggy platform in 2019 with the Ultima RB7 stock spec. As for another 10th scale platform, we have their four-wheel drive buggies in the Ultima, Laser, and the Progress. It may have had a weird name but itself, but the design itself for the Progress was revolutionary if a bit of a dead end in the long run, as it was, to my knowledge, the first four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering buggy available to hobbyists as a full kit and not a conversion. However, like I mentioned, it was kind of a dead end as the reliability wasn't very good and it was very heavy. So, a year later, in 1985, we got the Optima. The Optima was Kyosho's premier four-wheel drive buggy for the track, and it was pretty good, but they did end up redesigning it not too much longer later in the Optima Mid, the Mid standing for the location of the motor as prior had been in the rear. The Optima Mid would go on to win a couple of nationals even back to second place at the IFMAR Worlds for a four-wheel drive class in 1987. Now, these days, the future of Kyosho's 10 skill program is more or less up in the air, as not even Kyosho seems to know what to do with it. I know a couple of Kyosho drivers, but even still, it's even they don't know. No lo sé. Where they seem to have steered most of their efforts these days, and where they seem to have the most success is in 8th scale. Going back a few years, the 8th scale engine buggy class was really starting to take off alongside 10th scale racing as a re and as a result, Kyosho really wanted to make a purely race design buggy not based on full size cars of the time like their Circuit 20. The result was the Burns MP1. The Burns MP1 was basically one of the first modern designs of what we consider an 8th scale buggy today. It had an aluminum pan chassis, along with injection molded plastics on the side to maintain rigidity and give you access to the engine and electronics compared to the tube frame chassis of the early days. It was also one of the first A-scale buggies to employ a single-ish piece Lexan body, which I'm sure as you know, became very popular. Oh, and along with that, it had a full suite of double wishbone suspension all the way around. Even though the buggy was very good for its time, and it did win a lot at national events, it didn't win internationally, specifically IFMAR. So as a result, Kyosho went back to the drawing board and came back with the Inferno. The Inferno was, and still is, one of the most important racing buggies ever made, as it standardized a lot of what we come to see in 8th scale buggies to this day. It was full redesigned from the Burns, as almost none of the parts were carried over from it. However, it still had the same design philosophy of being an RC racing buggy first and foremost, and it still had a lot of the designs that made the Burns great like the four corner double wishbone suspension and the one piece Lexan body. The idea was to make the Inferno's Inferno easier to work on and stronger, and that's exactly what it was. It was also much faster than the Burns MP1, and as a result, the Inferno would go on to win the IFMAR Fuel Buggy Class in 1992, 1994, 1996, 1998, 2000, 2002, 2006, and 2010, making Kyosho the number one company for this specific class. However, after 2010, things have been sort of down for Kyosho, as they haven't been able to crack a gold medal since. However, I won't be surprised if that happens to change.
In the modern day, Kyosho seems to have gone back to the original goal of creating just flat-out fun RC cars for people not looking to take them too seriously. Their RTR collection is very good and fun, and I haven't even mentioned their mini Z RC cars and trucks. However, on the racing side of things, things have been sort of up in the air, even on the 8th scale side. Lots of people wonder if they'll ever recapture their glory days and hang on to that hope. It's exactly that heritage and hope that keeps them around to this day and placed above other companies like S-Works and JQ Racing in terms of popularity, at least here in the States. Kyosho is a wild card in the modern RC world, doing their own thing. And to be honest, I like it that way. That's all for now. If you stuck around until now, I really appreciate you. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more in the future. That's it for this video, but don't forget to subscribe and check out the rest of our RC Racing video series. And don't forget, be an RC TV hero. Make sure to hit that join button and find out all the details about being an RC TV hero.